Today on our 2013 Lincoln MKX, we'll be installing the Kurt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness, part number C56121. Now to begin our install, we'll open up the rear hatch. Then we'll need to remove the fasteners that secure the rear taillight assembly. There are two fasteners on each side. Once we remove the screws and set them aside, we'll then pop the taillight assembly out of its position, being careful not to break the alignment tabs underneath. Next, we'll go ahead and press on the wiring connector lock so that we can remove the wiring harness from the back of the taillight assembly. We'll set the taillight assembly aside. Now we'll go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. Now with both taillight assemblies removed, we'll move to the inside of the vehicle where we'll remove the spare tire cover and then the rear threshold. The rear threshold has fasteners underneath, so we'll gently pull up until the fasteners release and then remove the threshold completely setting aside. Next, we'll remove the plastic trays on either side of the spare tire. We'll set them aside for reinstallation later. Next, we'll go ahead, we'll remove the grommet that secures the taillight wiring harness as it passes through the body of the vehicle. Once we pull it out, we can then take the new green wire connector from our new four pole harness, feed it up behind the interior panel and out through the open hole from where we would remove the grommet. Then we'll take a pair of side cutters, cut a slice in the grommet where we can feed the green wire into and reinstall the grommet. Next, plug the green wire connector directly into the manufacturer's wiring. The other end will go into the back of the taillight assembly. Next, we'll go ahead and take a zip tie and secure the green wire to the manufacturer's wiring, and we'll cut off the excess of some zip tie to clean up the install look. Now we're ready to reinstall the taillight assembly. Next, we'll begin routing our wiring over to the driver's side. For this application, we can route it inside the body channel using a pull wire. We'll take the pull wire, route it through the channel first, pulling it over to the driver's side. Next, we'll repeat the same process, taking the yellow wire connector and feeding it up behind the driver's side taillight assembly. We'll cut the slit in the grommet, feeding the wire in. Then we'll plug the yellow wire connector into the manufacturer's wiring and the other end of the T connector into the taillight assembly. We'll secure the wiring with a zip tie, cut off the excess from the zip tie, and then reinstall the driver's side taillight assembly. Next, we'll start routing the power wire for our new converter box. This power wire will ultimately get run up to the vehicle battery. We'll go ahead and take the power wire, route it around the second row seat post, interior panel to the converter box. We'll strip back the power wire and add the butt connector provided with our install kit. The other end of the butt connector will get secured to the black wire coming from the converter box. Next, we'll go ahead and wrap up this connection point with some black electrical tape to help keep out any dust, dirt, debris, or moisture. Now with the power wire secured, we'll go ahead and mount the converter box. To mount the converter box, we'll use the two-sided adhesive supplied with their install kit. Peel back one side of the adhesive and adhere it to the converter box, and then remove the other side of the adhesive and secure it back behind the paneling on the driver's side. Note, when it's securing the converter box, we're looking for a clean, flat surface, preferably sheet metal. Now with our converter box mounted, we'll go ahead and take the white wire from the converter box with the pre-attached ring terminal and secure it to the body for the ground for our new converter box and four pole connection. Using a self-tapping screw, we'll go ahead and secure the ring terminal directly to the body of the vehicle. Quick tech tip, I recommend to find a location where the sheet metal doubles up for a more secure ground. Below the taillight assembly near the threshold would be a great location. Now with our power wire secured to the converter box, We'll go back to the manufacturer's grommet and use our utility knife to cut a small slice in the grommet. Then we can take the other end of our power wire, feed it down through the manufacturer's grommet underneath the vehicle. 
We'll go ahead and pull the excess wire down underneath the vehicle and then secure the power wire to the manufacturer's wiring with a zip tie. Now with our wire fed underneath the vehicle, we can go ahead and route it up to the front of the vehicle at the bottom of the engine compartment. We'll then route up through the engine bay and ultimately to our battery. Keep in mind when routing your wire, stay away from any moving components such as steering or suspension or excessive heat such as the exhaust. Now we've reached the bottom of the engine bay, we'll go ahead and take our pull wire, feed it up through the engine compartment, and then secure the power wire to the pull wire and pull it up to the top of the engine bay. We'll go ahead and secure it with the black zip ties provided with our install kit. Now with our power wire pulled into position, we'll go ahead and cut off the excess from the zip ties to clean up our install look and move to the top of the engine compartment. Here, we'll secure the wiring as necessary and route it towards the positive battery post. We'll go ahead and cut off any excess wire from the power wire so that we can install our inline fuse holder. To do this, we'll strip back the power wire and add a butt connector. We'll take the fuse holder and attach it to the butt connector and a ring terminal to the other end of the fuse holder. We'll go ahead and wrap up this connection point with some black electrical tape and then route the ring terminal to the positive battery post. We'll remove the cover from the positive battery post, revealing a positive battery post so we can remove the nut Install the ring terminal and then re-secure the nut. We'll go ahead and install the fuse into the fuse holder and then secure our fuse holder here to the manufacturer's wiring. We'll go ahead and reinstall the positive battery post cover and secure our wiring as necessary with the zip ties. We'll cut off the excess from the zip ties to clean up our install look. We're now ready to test our new four pole connector. To test the four pole connector, we'll use our test light, taking the ground clamp and putting it on the white wire terminal, which will also be the open or bare terminal. Then testing the brown wire terminal will be our running light circuit. Yellow wire terminal will be the left turn signal left brake. And green wire terminal will be the right turn signal right braking. Now that we know our new four pole connector works, let's go ahead and show you how to use it. We'll simply take the four pole connector out of the lower storage compartment and route it out and over the threshold and down to our hitcher accessory. Be careful to stay away from the Rear cargo door latch, as pinching off in the latch can harm the wire. However, the weather stripping is thick enough that we can simply close the rear cargo door on it, pull out any wire necessary to run to our hitch or accessory, and then once we're finished, we'll simply open up the rear cargo door and store it down with the spare tire cargo area. And that's it, we're ready to hit the road. That does it for the install of the Kurt T Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness with four pole flat connection, part number, C56121 on our 2013 Lincoln MKX.